On this podcast, I featured a meeting the fellows of MTN Media Innovation Program Cohort 3 2024. The meeting we had with uh, the CEO of MTN, Carl Torella, and other executives at MTN headquarters, Lagos, Nigeria. It was really an inspiring, it was an eye opening conversation. And he did say that this tariff increase is actually imminent, not only imminent, but is something that will happen to save telecommunication industry in Nigeria. The fellows had the opportunity to make comments and ask questions to the CEO, which he gave answers to. Welcome to Omar's Diary. My name is Omar Sweetheart on radio, TV, social media, Sweetheart everywhere. This is where I chronicle my journey as a broadcast journalist, a social impact journalist, and a volunteer for humanity. This is where I tell my stories and I to tell the stories of others. Take a listen and I will see you at the other side of the conversation. Make you talk about being away. Sweet heart of radio. The best for last by bringing them here to come and meet with all the people that are making things happen. So please, once again, a round of applause for yourself. Introduction, but they've met most of the execs here. So, we actually, have an event flow, and number one on the list is our column to be Chuku to come and uh, give an overview. I don't want to usurp your role since you are the process, since you are the process owner. I want you to come and give an overview of what this is all about before we dive into the other parts of the program. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you very much. As usual, it is great to see all of you, uh, the third cohort, and hopefully, not the last. And when I say that, hopefully not the last, I wink at certain people. <laughs> There's a reason why I had some executives sit the way they are sitting. It is those with the money, in the hope that uh, I can uh, get their support going forward. Um, first, I think I should say congratulations to all of you. Um, I hope that the program has helped uh, in some way. As I said at the beginning, uh, this program is not to get you people uh, to write positive stories about MTN, but to write factual stories not just about MTN, but about the industry. I don't need to introduce the program to anybody, neither yourselves nor to the executives. Some of the executives here are uh, facilitators in the program. I understand that when Aisha came in, you nearly gave her a standing ovation, <laughs> which speaks to how interesting and interactive his, uh, her um, session must have been with you. Sessions, actually. Oh, she had sessions. She also had the hackathon with him. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's good to know. Maybe when she leaves here, she will become a teacher. So, that's my job, yeah. Keep going. <laughs> So I'd, I'd shared an anecdote with you where I got feedback, and I think you were there, got feedback from the group chairman and the group president and CEO, and they were very, very happy with meeting with you in South Africa, especially the group chairman, okay? Um, and the, he, I was happy that Pal was there when the conversation was going on. And uh, why I am happy, I have revealed before, I will reveal again, you are our last cohort, unless something happens. And what I'm praying, wink wink, is that something will happen. Okay? But the group, is, <laughs> but the group is saying that this is a wonderful program. I don't know if you are aware, but the governments of Nigeria and South Africa actually want to make this program a binational program. Wow. So, so they are thinking of elevating it to that undergirding the bilateral conversation between uh, Nigeria and South Africa. And for me, there is no greater way to say that this is a success than to elevate it to that level. Okay? Having spoken about that, I don't want to waste our time. I don't want to waste Carl's invaluable time. So, I will introduce, have you introduced the executive? Then? Yes, I've done that already. Okay. I know we could speak that. So, what we can do now is, uh, from the event flow... Don't you have an unfinished video here? 
Yeah, yes, we were waiting for you, so we thought we should just use it as a timetable. Okay. No, but we'll still play it all over again. All right. But while you're at it, we are doing this in partnership with the Panatlantic yes, University I'm School I'm of Media. I'm, 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 I'm getting there. So, um, as you guys know, the premier university in Nigeria, despite whatever anybody will do with regards to ranking, especially when it comes to your field, is the School of Media of the Panatlantic University. You have experienced it, you are experiencing it, okay? And uh, my Oga here, from the time this was conceived to the time, I, maybe I should tell a small story. When this was conceived, nobody had a clue what we were going to be doing. Nobody. We just had like a framework. We want to do something. It took maybe six, seven months yes. yeah. of serious work between the university and MTM to get the structure for what this has become. Okay. And what I find interesting is that every cohort has been an improvement on the previous one. Okay? When it started, we did well. But by the second cohort, what came out, I was like, oh wow, we could do this. From what I hear in the report I've gotten, with yourself, it's even been taken to a higher level. And Tao has said I'm trying to take his job. Majority of us that are here are so proud of Pan Atlantic University that I suspect that we are all hoping we will become facilitators there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we need my future uh, my, job. My future job. <laughs> Your future job. Uh, 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 Aisha has taken a leap of faith. I understand my yeah. other colleagues. He can, uh, uh, I think, show you how Last year, last quarter. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You. Last call. Yes. Yeah, okay. yes. Okay. So we'll keep trying to get the executives involved and to give you the kind of insight that you need with regards to NTN. I know you've always had an issue as the media, access to NTN. Okay? It doesn't get deeper than this. You have access, you know how NTN thinks, and more than anything else, you understand, I accept on and think, you understand the industry a lot better than you did before you started this program. That's the goal of the program. Not just that you understand MTN, but you understand the industry. When we speak about tariff increase, we don't need to sell it. You understand the industry enough to be able to say, okay, this is actually what is going on. When we speak about name sin linkage, you understand why and what it should be. I believe all that is done and busted. Okay? So, um, we'll take this as a kind of welcome statement. I remain to be Chukwu Akilo. I'll now hand over to my, uh, I don't know what to call it, my infant terrible. You should be that I was also a resource person. <laughs> <laughs> I, I teach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, before before we call on um, Carl Toriola to speak, I also want uh, Mr. Ezechuko, I mean, representing our partner organization, to also say one or two things. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Good afternoon again. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm good to proud to be able to present this cohort to you again physically. Like I said, you saw them. Uh, virtually earlier, before we went to South Africa. We bring you good greetings from the university, warm greetings from our VC, from our dean. They said to extend their thanks and appreciation to you and your team again for the good work they're doing for the Nigerian media. And to tell you again that it's a very worthy investment that uh, is indelible. You know, this investment is indelible. Um, this cohort is unique, like you said, because the, the products of um, improvements on the previous cohorts and also um, the participation of our partners in MTN has been very, very wonderful. We have left no stone on turn in making sure that the whole cohort enjoyed robust support. And so this is a program that uh, we have seen that is the best structured media training in Nigeria today. And best of all. In terms of corporate sponsorship and uh, capacity building for the media, no one has come close to what MTN is doing with MIP. 
And I don't think in the near future anyone is going to go there close enough. Uh, why? Because the pro program is uh, robust in content, wide in scope, and uh, with a lot of swag, and centered by MTN's global cloud. That when you wear MIP, your swag increases. Uh, by the time we are done with them, uh, and expose them both locally and globally. What you have are no more fellows, but MTN ambassadors in the media. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope I'm right. Yes. Yes. And uh, so I think we are very, very happy that um, we have pulled it through to this level and we are proud of MTN. And thank you again and again and again. <laughs>
okay? Um, so it's we are not trying to create a propaganda machine for MTN. We just want to continue. I mean, how many people have we put through this program now? 60, 60 plus yeah, minus 60. of <coughs> practitioners in the media there that understand the industry um, and can report on it accurately. Um, of course, I'm passionate about the telecoms industry. I actually think that of all the industries, utilities, etc., that has impacted every single life in Nigeria and is operating as close to the best global standards as possible, I think telecoms is, is actually yeah. the one. Um, people come and ask, oh, you make too much money, my call dropped, credit disappeared, and I keep asking, is it power? Or is it transportation that you have seen make so much progress over the last 23 odd years? So while you must hold us to account, it must also be recognized that we've been transformative um, um, in this Nigerian space. So my vision is to hear from all of you continuously in the various channels of press, um, print, um, digital, television, etc. And every time remember that these are people that came out of this amazing program. I'm hoping all these global prizes that they give for media and journalism, Pulitzer Prize and all these things, one day we'll see one of you guys actually um, winning those. And it's also important, my, my senior cousin is Dele Lodge, I I don't know if you guys know Dele Lodge, do you know that? He's from Modakeke. He's from Modakeke, he's my cousin, very well known to me. So he was a reporter in the New York Post and reported on the genocide in Rwanda and won a Pulitzer Prize. So those are the kind of things that we want to see. Um, from you um, mm -hmm. out there. We're very proud of you. Um, we've created an excellent, fantastic opportunity. You guys have met people that um, are not easily accessible. Yeah. President Abu Mbeki, really an amazing leader. Um, post Mandela, he was number two to Mandela, became president. He lived in Nigeria mm -hmm. um, while he was in exile. Those kind of people are just people that um, you, know, you have a once in a lifetime opportunity to meet. Yeah. Um, as well as the team over here. So go forward and make sure you remain independent, well-informed, um, and vocal um, media practitioners. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, well, we should not forget one thing. Primarily, they are journalists. Yes, they are MIP fellows, but they are journalists. So they will have one or two questions to oh, ask you. Okay, so every court has a class president. And for quote three, we have Mr. Nifemi Obutoe of TVC. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I had sent you an email on behalf of the class, so consider this a follow-up. I believe I responded. Also, yes, it is. Uh, you followed me on LinkedIn, that's powerful. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been sharing that around that CD. The Nigerian CEO is following me. We've also sent a couple of people to you, including Fire Mama. Phone Shaw, yes. MTN Group Chairman. <laughs> so we have gone to tell the tale ourselves. I'm just going to tell you a short story of how impactful this program has been. I think that we're in the final week of what might be the most impactful six months of our career journey based on the experience we've had so far. We've made a big family. We are so, it's a vibrant community of very brilliant journalists. Our experience in South Africa is top notch. We had a great time. Your personal letter also you know, was so emotional. We're so grateful for that. Now, in the past six months, we've started seeing the impact on our career. Um, Doom just got promoted as um, head of editorial Bella Niger. Bella Niger. of uh, Bella Niger. Um, this man Stephen. works with Punch. Stephen got promoted as senior correspondent of the Punch newspaper. Who else? Yeah, yeah, yeah. works with the BBC. She is now African correspondent from the, for the BBC. Chia yeah. Millie hmm. just recently was ranked number six of two of the five most powerful women in journalism. Yeah. The list is endless. I could tell you in the video story of how much impact this program has had on us. Now, that's, that's, that's nothing compared to the impact it's had on the industry. So we have a lot of Nigerian journalists who are looking forward to the next court. They have been consulting us, how did you guys do it? <laughs> how did you write an article? And one thing about our industry is that we don't have as much prestigious programs like that. We don't. 
So it will break our heart, and not only those of the fellows here, but of the hundreds of thousands of aspiring talents in the Nigerian media and communication industry if MTN ends this program. We know we understand the economic reality, but you have made so much impact that you may have to prioritize this, and we are counting on that. <laughs> After we are done with your sales speech. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So on behalf of everyone, we just want to say thank you. Thank you. We love you. Okay. Thank you so very much. You heard his voice, Remy Flo's voice. It was a newscaster on TVC. If you want TVC, it's a familiar face. In fact, my dad told me that he's his favorite newscaster. Oh. 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 But it's a good thing that he's the one that spoke. You don't want to hear Lucas's voice. He <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably plays Fuji music. But anyway, let's, that, that's an aside. Okay, so what you do is you tell us your name, the platform you represent, and you ask your question. Maybe we'll do about four just to manage um, Carl's time. So who wants to go first? Okay. I'm not asking question. I just ah. want to make a comment. Oh. Ah, okay, all right. Please go ahead. <laughs> Please go ahead. I'm not taking time. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Let's sing this. Good afternoon, sir. <laughs> Glad to see you in person. You actually look more handsome in person. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. My name is Shioma Chia Chukwemeka. I work with Radio and TV Sapiens here. I'm a broadcaster, a journalist and also a social impact, and I'm also a volunteer, right? I just want to say thank you. I've said this over and over again. I always say this, um, just like, just to get on what the president has said, please, in all that MTN does, please, this program should continue, right? I'm standing here representing millions of young people who are literally inspired. They may not meet me, but each day, Back then on each other, they sent me messages of how I inspired them. And I started receiving, I noticed that these messages became more frequent since May. Because each time I'm on air, I'm sharing the stories of what we did, where we went, the lectures we took, right? And they are so inspired, right? And let me share something recently. I'm not taking time. <laughs> I, I had some students that came from Unzam. It's a rural area in Anambra State. They are the River Rhine area. So recently, they are, they are, being, they are flooded right now. The yeah, school is no longer in session. right? They are now in camps. But they came to our station, and the teacher had one plea. Please, Omar, let them believe in education. By the time I was done talking with them and telling them about the impact of MTN MIP, the teacher uh, sent me a feedback telling me that do you know that some of these students, they want to become journalists like you? For people like this, please continue with this program. Thank you so much. I do not take your time. <laughs> your name, your platform, and your question. Okay, my name is Charles Pius Julie I represent Signature Television. Um, I just wanted to ask how would MTN react to the latest news about how they're looking to increase your time? How would you react to it? What's, what's it? What are we expecting as consumers? Uh, I just want to find out. You are open the floodgates. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so look, <clears throat> Nigeria is in a <clears throat> very difficult position as a whole in terms of the market. And effectively, we are all going to pay the price of wastage of many, many years. Mm -hmm. Wastage of government resources, through whatever it may be, bad planning, corruption, everything, okay? Build up of debt, local and foreign debt. We talk about the foreign debt, but local debt is huge, okay? Um, and it has to be serviced in terms of interest payments and repayments as and when due, okay? Um, and if the money that was borrowed through all of these years was properly utilized, I think we will need good situation with the trajectory of the other countries that are moving forward very fast. And I was actually recently in Kotonou and I was very impressed with the progress of the Republic of Benin. So, um, the government is an institution where they are stuck. They have to increase their revenues by whatever means they have to do so. And 
usually the easiest way is to tax the people that are already pa paying taxes higher. And they will always default to that because water for is part of this resistance. But what they also need to do is clearly also expand the tax base, increase the number of people that are paying taxes, and grow the economy. First, we borrowed all of this money. Foreign loans, local bonds, treasury bills, sorry, treasury bills, etc. And we didn't use it to grow the economy it's effectively, but we so we're in a situation where government, even if you had the most brilliant person, would have to do some of the steps that are taken to them. Um, so there is an outlook of potential increase. I actually read something this morning. I'm yet to see the official government. It was a WhatsApp for it to be official government communication that BAT seems is going to go up. Have you seen that? Uh, there's a 5% yeah. So those are things that have. Yeah. But if you now take it down to NTN, NTN and telecoms industry is in a dire situation. I spoke to the public, uh, not to the public, in a, in, in, in a specific uh, conference or workshop that we're effectively in ICU. Oh. Part of what you need to be able to do, especially if you're reporting within the financial sector, is to be able to read income statements. If you read our income statements, our financial audited financial statements for end of December 2023 and end of June, you see MTN as big as we are, we're loss making. And we're loss making because of the impact of devaluation on our business. So we're in a dire situation. Um, it means there's a risk of you regressing over time. It won't happen overnight to the likes of nitrile quality that we had when some of you are probably not even born. Um, if the fundamentals of this industry are not fixed. And the biggest problem that we have is that this is the only industry that for the last 11 years or so we've seen, I think, only one tariff increase. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you cannot continue to produce goods and, or services, which is what we do, we produce services when your tariffs are the prices that they were 10 years ago. I often say you can't buy a Toyota Corolla. A Toyota Corolla 10, 11 years ago was in the range of, I know in 2006, a Toyota Camry was 3.6 million naira, brand new, mm -hmm. not talking about, mm -hmm. not 2006, only 2004. Um, a plane ticket, when I first moved back to Nigeria, I was born and bred in Nigeria, for first degree, primary school, secondary school, First degree in effect. You could not, when I moved back to Nigeria, a ticket to the UK was something like 80,000 naira. Wow. This is not that long ago. 2000. Mm -hmm. The year 2000, a ticket to the UK was 80,000 naira. Okay? And we can go on and on. And then people say, ah, but well, all of those are foreign denominated issues. What is it that you're buying in Nigeria? There's a basia of gari or a basket of tomatoes has gone up 10, 20 fold in Nigeria the last 5, 10 years. So if we don't see rapid and consistent tariff increases to keep in line with inflation, um, we're in a problem. Already now, because we are lost making the cont at contribution for corporate income tax, there's a lot of other stuff we pay, custom duties, um, we collect VAT on the part we have of the government, etc., etc. But corporate income tax for MTN Nigeria, that used to be the largest taxpayer after the oil industry, has gone to zero because we are making a loss. So. Let me wrap it up. Government is in a dire situation in terms of the fiscal state of the country, so they are forced to increase taxes. But the industry that contributes 14% of GDP it generates jobs, generates a lot of income for suppliers and subcontractors, must not be allowed to die out because of an absence of courage to increase tariffs when the electricity tariffs have been increased 341%. Petrol has gone from 100 and something naira to 1,000 plus naira, and so on and so forth. So that's my view on it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Yeah. Any other takers? Yes, just one. Okay, Stephen. Yes. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. My yes, name sir. is Stephen. I'm with <coughs> the Punch newspapers. Um, I would. Oh, I just uh, remembered very much. You. I covered the state house. I remembered very much in November 2023 when you visited uh, His, His Excellency the Vice President and the interaction you had in that meeting. Um, particularly, so my question is about the paper scenes, right, that we are launching now. So, um, on a lighter note, will we wake up one morning and, <laughs> and see that, okay, those of you who don't have paper scenes, your lines have been uh, deactivated? <laughs> Absolutely not. Absolutely. All right. I just wanted to little dig on that from, mm -hmm. from, from, from the horse's mouth. Thank okay. you. So let me, these are the, the, this is the Chief Corporate Services okay. and Sustainability Officer, so I'll allow him okay. to answer 
at the question a bit more expansively. But let me first point out one thing. We have an e -SIM now. So you don't need a physical SIM in here. Um, but the regulations require that you come to the virtual traditional SIM card to an e -SIM. And as e -SIM is there, the feature on your smartphones, the more recent ones, the last three, four years, where it says add SIM, add an e -SIM, you scan a QR code, QR code, and your SIM is activated. Okay, now that's excellent um, because first of all, we're not wasting money on plastics and all the components that used to make the microchip. Second, actually, if you lose your phone, um, to replace that eSIM, we'll just send you the QR code again, you scan it again, your line is active overnight. Um, and third thing, the issue of damaged SIM cards that are shifting from one disappear. So let's start with the eSIM, which is even for me. I it's like I get the sense that not that many people actually realize that these sims are already um, out there, have been in Nigeria for the MTN Nigeria specifically. The other operators only launched a few months ago, but in MTN Nigeria specifically, we've had that license, I think 2020 or 2021. Okay, so that's one. Now, this sim we are talking about, if you look at the sim card, you will see a microchip surrounded by plastic. Okay, and even when you buy the sim card, there's that plastic which you break the sim out of. Instead of using plastic, which effectively doesn't break down and harms the environment on a long-term basis, that is now a paper-based solution, that plastic part. That's all it is. Now, your sim that you have today is going to work perfectly. But this is, you need to have the right type of paper designed to have the durability and everything. But let me have a to expert on this. I don't think there's There's nothing to add. It's terrible that we have this. It's one sim at the time. So we're never going to say everybody come in and change. We don't have the capacity. You saw the the challenges we have with being sim language. We don't have that. But if you lose your sim and you want to do a welcome back, that's an opportunity to change. If somebody is buying a new SIM, that's an opportunity. So it's going to be one SIM at a time. And to appreciate this, really, I don't have the numbers offhand again, but if you look at the big, I think it's in billions, mm -hmm. tons of plastic that mm -hmm. SIM cards contribute mm -hmm. to the global waste, mm -hmm. you see that it's a necessity. Yes. And we think that everybody will go there at the end of the day. Oh, as usual, MTN is blazing the truth. Okay. Okay. Yeah. If you look at America now, if you go to buy an iPhone from America, it doesn't come with SIM slot at all. Mm -hmm. It can't. Not anymore. For you to buy an iPhone that comes with SIM slot, you probably have to go to Asia or Dubai or something. Mm -hmm. yeah. So everybody is heading there. It's part of the sustainability journey. We're not just saying we're, in, we're doing ESG. We're embedding it in our processes. So this is again one step towards saving the environment. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Akin. Okay. Then we'll take one more after Akin. Okay. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Akin Obake. I work with CNBC Africa. Um, last year, you know, we were surrounded with news regarding the USSD debts. Uh, first of all, we need to know where that stands. Cities are banks operating. They are declaring stellar profits, stellar performances. And no one is saying anything about the audit. Have you guys collected the money and just kept quiet? We in the media, we need to know because we really carried the story. You know, so um, right now we need to know where, where that stands. And a follow-up to his question, uh, for the e-SIM, is there a cost differential? And also the paper-based SIM. So if we're telling people out there, you can switch to e-SIM, is it coming with an extra cost? And then also regarding the data center, you know, what's the time frame? Um, and then, you know, just the paparazzi around it so we can get to know about it. Okay. Um, first question was bank debt. Let yeah. me answer you clearly on this board. It could look like we have not collected the debt. It can. Mm -hmm. They are paying uh, to some extent on account of their current usage, but the historical debt has not been cleared. Now, that is being addressed by our regulator, and we think that position is not, uh, is not sustainable considering the financial position of the industry. And at some point in time, um, we will only do this, of course, with regulatory approval. Um, if we don't clear that debt, we are going to have to take the actions that the regulator yeah. approves, which is going to be um, suspension of USSD services, but possibly also suspension of access to apps, bank apps, because they have to recognize that debt. That's the reality. Mm -hmm. But because they're a very responsible organization, it's not something we do trivially, because the financial infrastructure of the country rides on us. So mm -hmm. we want to follow the process, we want to exhaust all other possibilities of addressing that problem and before we take radical action, 
only with approval of the appropriate uh, authorities, but it is at the forefront of our regulator's mind. And we believe that there's a very constructive regulator in the central bank um, who understands the situation, and between the two regulators, they work out the solution. And okay. that is a compromise. So that I've answered you clearly mm -hmm. without any. Yeah. And we encourage you to try the eSIM out. To convert your SIM to, to an eSIM. You can do it downstairs while you're here. Just because it enlightens you onto how an eSIM works. Mm -hmm. You don't have one already. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. There's actually a price, a price differential. The SIM card has a cost. The eSIM doesn't. E -SIM doesn't. Yes. Correct. But for the paper one, we are looking no, at zero. Oh, no yeah. difference. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Well, and what was the third question? Uh, the data center. The data Prime center one. phase one is to be completed. I would say end of quarter one, um, beginning of quarter two next year, and okay. um, completed. It's a lot of progress. They didn't visit the other uh, the, the, Have you visited the? No. So so maybe. So it's not in the plan to see the. Ajao data center. The new Ajao data center. Something we should consider. Okay. Um, especially since it is now doing construction that we can let people in once it's live. It's a very sensitive location, even okay. etc. Et you know. And that is the biggest uh, data center in West Africa. It is a huge project um, going on, I think, on track. We're very proud of it. We're going to have massive hosting capabilities, particularly in phase two. A lot of it is for our capacity, but phase two, we're going to have massive hosting capabilities um, for this market. But it's progressing well. I got two pictures on Thursday, as well as the project program plan. I was there some times ago, some time ago. I'm sure you guys saw it on the day. Very proud of it. That <coughs> Okay, thank you. So we'll take the last question. Um, How many ladies have asked questions? <laughs> Only one lady made a comment. Made a comment <laughs> I'm not taking a question from any man. Okay, okay sure. all right. Okay, so do we have any takers from the ladies? Yes. Your name, your platform, and your question. Okay, afternoon, everyone. My name is Nkete Mbona. I'm from the British Broadcasting. Um, my question is on your CSR. I know that times are very hard and uh, everyone is grappling with a very cold economy environment, which is you know, worse than businesses like yours. But I'm very concerned about accessibility because whether we like it or not, data is still very expensive in Africa. I know you have infrastructure, you're backing infrastructure issues, you're backing um, uh, an ecosystem that doesn't really support what you do, where you provide your electricity, your water, your security for your structure, the list is endless. However, I'm wondering if there's ever going to be a situation where we will see MTN hotspots in several communities. It doesn't have to be within, education, for instance, within educational institutions, around markets, business areas, where people can have access to connectivity maybe lower than what they would ordinarily pay for via a subscription, a monthly, weekly, whatever uh, frequency, or almost free. I'm not saying it has to be free, but I'm saying that is there going to be a time where we would have hotspots in different parts of, um, of, of cities, and not just Lagos. Lagos and Abuja tend to be the only part of Nigeria that businesses look at, but I'm concerned about the young people in just Plateau State. I'm concerned about the farmer in Berlin Kebi, all the way in the north. Is there a time we're going to see hotspots provided by MTN to support smartphones and very lower end 2G and 0G devices to help connect and access to data? Thank you. See, let me let me point out something. So, what's your name? Kichi. Sorry, I don't want to use you as the punching bag, but I want to point out something. Before you say data is very expensive in Nigeria, go and research it. Don't jump to those conclusions that have been subconsciously fed into people's mind. Don't take my word for it. Too. Don't take my word for it. Take six African countries. Go on the website of whatever the operator is. Vodacom, Safaricom. Uh, Airtel, Syria alone, uh, whatever, Etisalat, um, Egypt, and compare the price for it, 10 gigs, 20 gigs, convert it to Naira, and tell me then whether data is very expensive in Nigeria or not. I have charts, I can start bringing up presentations that actually shows that today, ladies and gentlemen, MTA in Nigeria, data is probably one of the cheapest. What statistics? Maybe you remember. 
But G GSMA, which is the industry association, yeah. can give you a statistic. Do they have the report? People no, default to what they've heard and think it's true. And it is not. It is not. So please let us be careful not to just take those things that we have been predators expensive. It is extremely cheap. That's step one. Step two, people can build hotspots and continue with the CSR initiatives when they are making a profit. When we say MTN Nigeria is making a loss, last year is 700 or something so billion dollars. Really what that means yeah. is the money we are generating is not enough to pay our bills. We are surviving now because we are effectively spending savings. A company that's in that state cannot <coughs> afford to go and build hotspots. They should make their money from the urban centers where the wealthy people are using iPhone 13 and, and then go and support locations like educational institutions, building KB, etc. But if you're not making money, you cannot invest in those kind of things. Mm -hmm. Now, we have, that's why we say the state of industry is in intensive care units because we're not making enough to cover our costs. We're continuing operating effectively like living on, on, on a reserve on tank, borrowed time. on borrowed time in the anticipation that the government will increase tariffs and then we'll be able to recover that borrowed time and start to do our CSR. And yes, um, providing um, support for various institutions and there are many, many, many types of support but as a, as a telecommunications company, that is actually where we should start. It will come, but the first priority is we must ensure that we return to profitability. Because it's like you are a, you are, you're someone that is in an ICU bed and is in a coma. And you're telling that person to jump up and go and help his auntie in the village to farm. First, you have to recover before you can go and help your auntie in the village to farm. If it will be good, for sure, to please get the studies from GSMB. Yes. Okay. <coughs> and these studies were probably when Naira was 1,200 yes. Yes. to 1. And share the cost of data in Nigeria across the country. And don't just, your responsibility, don't just take our word for it. Go on the website of all of these companies 10, 20, 50, 100 gigs. Check what the price is, check the price in Nigeria. You make up okay. your minds on it. All right. And we are going to make an opportunity for another lady. I just wanted to add something. The perception of data not being affordable. It's also a perception of the level of poverty, poverty in the yes. because when you look at when you look at the minimum wage and you look at the cost of data, it tells and, and like Carl said, sometimes it's 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 the conversation around narratives. Where's the narrative coming from? If you look at it, it creates a false. Uh, uh, it sounds like. Data is expensive when you measure against, but that's not the truth. Because remember, this industry, 96% of what we use is important. So ideally, if you want to factor in that data, the cost, you should measure it across the world. This is the same. It's the same Huawei, Ericsson. It's the same. It's the same equipment. So that equipment is not cheaper to us than it is to an American or to an Egypt. No, it's the same equipment. In actual fact, it's more expensive to us because our duty and our pro processes are so opaque that there are payments that you made that won't show up in other people's jobs. So ideally, we should be more expensive. So if you want to measure, why I'm saying this is when you measure, you measure apples for apples. Okay, if you take that narrative and walk away, creates an impression, oh, it's too, ex it's too expensive. I was just having a conversation with somebody on our NTN Foundation, and the question, some formal question I was asked is, how is NTN still able, despite making losses, to continue to support through the foundation? Mm -hmm. Okay? It just goes to what he's saying. You're spending your savings. Before this started, I had a conversation with you where I pointed out to you that if power goes today, you can buy a generator. There's no generator for you to make a call. If we're unable to provide services, trust me, that's it, <coughs> you're done. You can't make that call because you can't buy your own network. Do, do you understand what I mean? So it's critical, we understand, for a company like NTM to actually go out publicly, and this is a company that is normally shy about such things, to go out boldly, publicly, and say, if you don't do anything, the industry is at risk. And not just MTN, 
Glow says it. Uh, uh, Airtel says it. Nine Mobile says it. The industry says it. GSMA, and please re research GSMA. It's against their policy to speak to pricing rate. It's against GSMA policy because GSMA was established for inclusivity to make sure we don't forget anybody. For them to look at Nigeria and say that we must institute a sustainable way for this industry to survive. It means that, like uh, Modupe said at, at NES, yes. when he was asked, he said that they asked him what kind of timeline mm -hmm. you say the industry might collapse. He responded graphically. He said that normally in your house you have a UPS. When there's no power to the UPS, he starts doing pain, 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 pain. He says that we are there. Because the next thing you hear is pain. So it's really, really, really a big issue. Unfortunately, the success of the industry tends to create the impression that we are at Eureka. We're not. We're not. Okay. Oh, thank you. Then Thank you. We are, because we have three men speak and only one lady, we are going to take one more question. Mm -hmm. My name is Juliet Tonto, we're a broadcaster with Royal Village 9349 FM. Um, interestingly, Mr. Tobey addressed a few things I was going to mention mm -hmm. because I was going to speak about okay, even if you say um, data and core returns are not expensive, is it affordable? Looking at the minimum wage in Nigeria. But since you already addressed that, my question is. Sorry, let me ask one question. All right. By how much was the minimum wage increased in Nigeria? <laughs> It went from 30,000 to By how much has telecom prices been increased in Nigeria? So, start your affordability perspective on that premium. Now, continue. I want to be a reporter. I'm not going to talk about that because, like I said, we started already address that. But my own thinking is. I remember in one of our classes, uh, one of our facilitators from MCN had mentioned, um, you know, MCN's goals, which includes increasing, you know, connectivity across Nigeria. And I'm wondering, you know, even with the minimum wage, it's still not enough for, you know, a regular Nigerian to survive. And now we're talking about increasing the cost of, you know, data and calls because that's what is good for your business. But for a regular household, imagine, you know, drawing up your budget and thinking. Oh, I need to, I need to pay for transportation, education, feeding. Where does data fall in that ranking? And do you think that people will now begin to say, maybe I don't need this much data. Maybe I'll not do as much as I used to do. I'm 6,500. I need to get about 37 gig. I think I'm only getting about 25. And I can see that you know, there are some options that used to be available that are no longer available. So for a regular average Nigerian, who might think, yeah, data is like, but do I really need it that much? And they decide, I don't want to do as much as I used to do, maybe I'll just do small data. But doesn't MTN worry that eventually, as much as you might break even in terms of increasing your cost of, you know, your tariff cost, what if your consumers drop? Would, would that still allow MTN break even, or would you even still keep your approach in the market? So, let me first make it clear to you. Now, we are not asking for increases in pricing that are similar to band you know, the sorry, 341%, or similar to some kind of regulation that we've seen for the petroleum industry, okay, which was 500%. We've gone from 209 or pre, pre regulation to 160 to 1200. That's like by time. We're not expecting that. Actually, what we would like, effectively speaking, is on an annual basis there's an inflation pass. Mm -hmm. The same way that inflation is what the console and it's thirty two thirty three percent inflation today, every year. Without that, you won't have a telecom signal. Okay? Now the truth is when a country is going through an economic constriction, everybody is going to have to tend to their dollars. We prioritize what is important, we prioritize what is not. Yeah. Each consumer, depending on the nature of his business, his work, his activity, education of his children, will decide whether Petrol is more expensive. It's going to happen. We we don't dictate the economy. The entire economy, everybody in this economy is having to make those factors. We are not asking to be able to continue to do an amazing business of billions of dollars just to survive. This is what we do. And hopefully when the economy turns, then maybe our success.
Yes, please, I enjoy this. Don't hesitate to. Let's talk about it. I mean, I'm just curious if you have done, maybe your data team, you've done the financial projection doing a couple of years down the line and say okay increase tariff by you know as much as we believe by inflation maybe we'll be able to sustain the business is it just for the business to be sustained or would they get will you get to a point where maybe like I said maybe somebody like me might consider that <laughs> I don't need data at that much I want to do a lesser data plan. I must say that we're getting any conclusion. So the projection is talking about experience similar devaluation and what you want and 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 and, 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 and uh, inflation. We increased tariffs. Consumption did not drop. It did not drop. Because one of the key things about the computer industry is it improves productivity. Mm -hmm. So people need it to drive their business for. Ghana had 45% uh, inflation. They did for two tariff increases. Total, two tariff increases were about 60%. There was no problem. So we have a lot of experience at first. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, sorry, just to add something. No men are bad from this. Is <laughs> <laughs> also, because when you say it's a sustainability conversation, remember it's also an investment conversation. When you are talking inclusion, like you're saying, and I think that speaks to what you were saying. When you're talking inclusion, if there is no money, there will be no inclusion because you can't go to certain uh, places. You can't go to certain if you look at some countries that are a lot more mature, you find out that, for example, you buy a bond of voices for you. And these days, where we are, until we invest to the extent that we can, of advance, those bottom of the pyramid are actually the people at most risk. Carl has explained it when he said, if you have a new share, I did mention new share for all the stuff. Where do you think we when do I keep a base station up in my village in Lou? When that base station is not making money? When I can buy back that resource to Lagos, around this thing up? You find out that whether you like it or not, Lagos, Abuja, and Pokako are already subsidizing some places because there are some base stations that are lost money. If, if you look at them as a single factor, they don't make enough money for them to remain up. It is because monies are coming from other places that they are still up. Do you understand what I mean? So you have to understand those dynamics to find out that it's actually a complex question. It's not as simple as it appears in the Thank you. One last point before I'm still going to be leaving, and then after that, we'll release the Post the UK war, COVID, everything. The whole world, US dollar, British pounds, US economy. Had what they thought the relatively high inflation, six percent, seven percent. Go, trust me. Go and research price increases in telecom services in the UK, Spain, USA. All of the operators in all of those countries, in dollar-based economies, they don't have this devaluation. Increase their prices. Every single one. Okay, so it's normal. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. No, yes. No, no, but we need to be sure. Oh, what the question doesn't have anything to do with price or tariff increase. <laughs> because <laughs> I think that we debated that to death. No, 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 in a way. Why is it in the way? Let me laugh. 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 And if next time you want to have enough time to talk, be the first person to raise your hand. You ladies are always like, after. Stand up first and talk. Don't let this man intimidate you. Okay, my name is Chi Emile Ezu. I work with this day newspaper. So, still on the price stuff, but in another way. My question is you know, when you wanted to increase the tariff, you guys engaged influencers, they came on Twitter, and then people started cutting their generations, their third generations. Do you think there's a better way you would have sold? Of course, you need to increase price, you have to sell food. Do you think there's a better way you would have sold that, that vision to Nigerians without using influencers? Because for me, it's sort of do back the gains of what you have recorded because the kind of courses that they, those influencers got there, some of them deleted. But most of them deleted their tweets because they couldn't stand it. Look, honestly, did you engage with um, those influencers? When you people go outside now, no. they say we engage no. you as influencers. So, okay. 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 so, so we, we, so we, so we, so we, we spoke to of. the okay. facts of the industry. We did not engage influencers. It didn't even look, we've actually stopped most of our brand ambassadors yeah. in MT and Nigeria. Yeah. We spoke to the fact the way we are speaking to you, and people have spoken about it. Okay, now let me tell you. Eh, sometimes, especially for the younger generation that are social media people, they will, this uh, data issue is very, very sensitive, very, very sensitive. With mm -hmm. cost of the, but it has to happen. If it doesn't happen, I'm out of the job. So it will happen. <laughs> <laughs> it will happen. So on everything you said, 
has spoken to the value of telecoms and we take it for granted. Okay? Normally, social overhead capital are capital on infrastructure provided by God. Okay? Interestingly, uh, telecom is a superstructure on which a whole lot of it. We have never, we rarely, let me not say now, stop and take a look at the telecom industry and say, okay, outside of the fact that I just make and receive calls, what else does this industry? We can say, oh, it's 14%, 16% GDP. Just stop and think of your life and how from the time you wake up to the time you sleep, the activities you undertake, and check the true value of telecom applications. From the time you wake up and you being journalists, you check your news feed, to the time if you don't have a car, you have to book an Uber, to ordering food, calling whoever you need to Bank call, transfer. Bank transfer. Just check it. If you do, you will understand that if you understand the true value of communications, not just MTA, the one thing that should not happen is for us to lose it. It will take us back to the dark ages like that. As simple and straightforward like that. If you stand back and just think it through, the conversation about whether or not it is expensive will actually cease. If you check, when fuel price increase, I used to trip with my guys. I said, well, I need to come out. There is no traffic on the road. Uh, is there traffic now? <laughs> People have adjusted mm. and they have moved on. And this is just for you to move from point A to B. It's not just what you're moving from. Now, there is something that increases your efficiency exponentially yeah. and then pass you in other ways. If anything happens to it. Thank you so very much. Um, I'll call on Ifemi again. Yes. Come and give the vote of thanks and right. um, do the gift presentation. Thank we'll you have so group much. Photos and we'll call it a day. Thank you. Thank you so much. Once again, we're grateful. In a couple of days, we're going to be defending our class project and it has to do with business plans. Some of us have never thought of uh, something to do that can sustain us after this job. So for the first time, we've been pushed to come up with innovative idea, and we're so excited about it. So once again, we are grateful for MTN for sponsoring this program, and um, for the fourth, fifth, and sixth court. <laughs> <laughs> so we have, um, consider this symbolic, right? And it speaks to the vision that has brought us far, and uh, we're saying, Cheers to all. So when you open it, you understand. <laughs> On behalf of the, the prestigious MTN <laughs> Media Innovation Program, we'd like to present this to Carl Toriola. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So wait, is it? I'm going to get this one to look at the ty tariff increase that is coming. <laughs> The best was actually saved for the last. It was really an interesting conversation that we had with uh, the MTN Nigeria CEO, Carl Torella, and other executives. The fellows, they were excited and it was really uh, an amazing outing. I did tell you that it was an interesting conversation that we had with the CEO MTN Nigeria, Carl Torella. It indeed was uh, an eye-opener, right? Telecommunication is life. Communication definitely is life. Imagine the number of things that could go wrong if we don't communicate with each other. Imagine how the world will go back to the dark ages if we lose out on the critical infrastructure communication communication really is a critical infrastructure because communication is life and i speak as an internet shutdown advocate communication is indeed life communication is the life wire of everything that we do because it impacts positively on the things that we do as individuals and even impacts on humanity Thank you so much for joining me on this podcast. My name is Oma. You're very sweet at on radio, TV, social media, sweetheart everywhere. I look forward to having you in my next podcast. I love you. Bye-bye.